Hey guys and girls, welcome to a new tutorial. So in today's video, we're going to be covering something we've covered a little bit in the past, which is some doors, but we're also going to be covering more physics based. Um, so if I was to press play here, we can actually run through this door without pressing any sort of key. It's actually the character's physics and the door that affects the way that it opens and the way that it swings. So I'm going to show you how to set this up and then a couple of other cool little things that we can do with physics and restraints um, that you could possibly use in games for puzzles or exploration kind of thing. So all I have here is a couple of cubes that I have just stretched out to, you know, there are my makeshift walls just so that we can see how this door would respond. Now the reason I've done that is because the door frame has to ignore the door for this to work properly. Um, otherwise the door is going to get stuck on the door frame and it's just going to be a pain. So I'm going to show you how to do all of that. So let's just get rid of this. We'll just say block all for this and we'll head into the door static mesh. And I'm just going to remove all of this collision. Sorry about that bang, no idea what that was. Alright, so we'll save that real quick. And we'll just, there we go, so that now should, yep, cannot simulate physics. So now you can see we can't we can't push the door, we can just float through it because by default this door doesn't have any collision. So you'll see here I'm just in the root content folder. If you search for door, you'll be able to get sm underscore door and sm underscore door frame. And those are the two objects that we're going to be using. <coughs> so the first thing we need to do is, as you saw, we can run through the door. So what we have to do is we actually have to give this door some collision. Whoops, I've double clicked on the wrong thing. Go away. So if we go into the door, and we check its collision, it will have nothing by default. So we can just go up here to the collision and we say add box simplified collision. This will just put a box around the outside. And for a door this is fine. We don't need anything more complicated for a door, so using the the engine's uh, basic basic um, collision system we can actually set this up. Now it's ever so slightly too big. You'll notice it's going right to the edges, which means it's going to be clipping with our door frame if we were to save that and head in here now let's see by default this is static so mobility we can have this set to anything I'm gonna leave this on static and then under physics we can set everything back to default real quick we can tick to simulate physics and we won't have any mass on it and the angular dampening is zero by default Okay, so now it's exactly what you guys should have if you're following along. You see, we can't actually push this. And the reason is because the collision is inside the door frame. And because the collision is inside the door frame, it's, it's not going to receive any input from anything. So, one way that we can fix this is we can say to the door frame, well, you know what, go to the collision presets under collision. Drop this down and we'll say custom. And now it's set to block everything. But if we go to physics body and we tick this into ignore, it will ignore all physics bodies. So now it will ignore the door. But as you can probably tell, that is not the way that we want a door to uh, to react to physics. So what can we do with the door? We can grab the door. We can scroll down, or rather scroll up, so it's too far down already. And under constraints, we want to lock its position on X, Y, and Z. And the reason is because we don't want this to move. Uh, we want this to rotate, so the X, Y, and Z positions are up and down, left and right, and then depth forwards and backwards, depends on which axis you're currently looking at. So now they won't be able to, the door shouldn't be able to actually move out of place, but you can see that it's rotating. So that bottom corner that's staying in place is where this door's pivot is. I can show you that if we actually select this. See, that's where that is. So this piece is always locked here. So to fix that, if we look at the rotation, you can see we have the roll and the pitch, which are green and red, which are X and Y. So we'll lock these. And now all we're left with is the Z, which is here. Yay, which is the yaw. So now we can open this door. But as you can see, we're colliding with it a bit dodgily. It's a bit freaky. It's not working the way that we want it to. And that's because the collision that was created by default is a bit too big. So if we go to the collision and we turn collision on, 
this purple box is our collision. We'll select that and it will go green. And we're just going to resize this. We're going to drag this in. And then we are going to drag it in a little bit more here. So we don't want it to ever accidentally clip with the walls. And we're also going to drag it down a bit so it's not actually quite touching the floor. And we'll save. And we'll go in and we'll press play and wink. You see, it's it's flying through this door, uh, through this wall here. That's because it's receiving a bit too much force from our guy, and it's clipping. So you see, it's it's bouncing off as it as it should, but if it's going too quick, there's a chance that it's going to fly straight through. So what we can do is we can actually turn on the mass, and now I've set this to 200. And if you set yours to 200, then it will feel like there's a bit of weight behind the door while your character is trying to push it. Because, you know, doors do have a bit of weight. You can turn this up a little bit more if you wanted to. So you'd have a heavier door. Um, but to stop all that springy springiness, the angular dampening, we're going to turn that up. And what that's going to do is, when it's stopped receiving any sort of physics input, it's going to have a lot more drag. You see how quick that stopped in comparison to before? And it's probably still a bit too quick, so we can probably turn this up to 6. There we go. So now once, once our character's through, the door's just going to swing, have a little bounce, and then stop where it should stop. So that's working as, as it should. We don't want to enable gravity. If we turn on gravity, what's going to happen is it's going to just fall out of the door frame, or it would if we had the uh, Z position not locked. You see now it's going to fall, so it's not quite in there. Now it's in the floor, and it's a pain to push. So we're going to make sure that Z is locked. And in that case, gravity doesn't matter because it can't move on the Z. So there we go. That's, that's quite a cool little door that we can we can use with physics. So we can actually use these constraints with other things as well. So if we were to grab a cube real quick and we were to oops, just scale this in such a way, like so. Just give this a bit of tilt to start, and we'll place that there. So, what we can do with this now is we can actually simulate physics with this. We'll give this some mass as well, we'll just say 100. We won't give it any linear dampening or anything. We're going to lock its position, and I might lock its rotation on uh, Y and Z, because in this case, red is the one that we want to move. And now we can actually use this like a little seesaw. And we shouldn't be able to push it if we go this side. We can't push it. But you can see now how we've got this cool little seesaw mechanic going on. Just by turning on physics and locking some constraints. So how can we use this in a game? Well, if we had another cube. That is not a cube. If we had another cube, we could, say, put this cube on the top. We'll just leave him here. We can turn his physics on. We can give him a really high mass, so we'll say like 5,000 mass. We'll press play. And now, because that cube is heavier than our character, the character cannot use his seesaw. So you can see how we could quickly create some really cool puzzles uh, involving moving objects to, to traverse the world. So we could have a a little platform that you could only reach the top of if you've already placed some some weight on one end of this pivot. Uh, can we? Let's see. I'm going to see if we can make this like a little springboard kind of thing. I haven't tried this out yet, so this may or may not work. We'll find out together. So, boing. Nope. Just breaks through. Probably too heavy. If we move it ever so slightly this way, and we'll turn its weight down. It probably still won't work. It's... Oh, we will. Cool. So you can see how we can do some pretty cool stuff with with different physics objects. We'll quickly get rid of that. There we are. Um, I think that's pretty much it for this one. Um. So physics constraints are actually really, really easy to set up. Obviously, if this was facing the other way, 
like this, then the pivoting isn't going to work properly because we've got it set to lock this way. Um, so in that case, you'd have to change the lock rotation so that Y is unlocked and X is locked. And now it would work. Yay! Which is really cool. Again, uh, with this as well, you can increase or decrease the dampening. So if we were to make this actually a much bigger seesaw, let's get rid of these real quick. We can make this a much bigger object. So we'll whoop, whoop. there we go. Let's just make sure that this is in a position we can use it. And obviously get rid of this area here so that we can see the seesaw in action. All right, so we've got a much bigger seesaw here. So we doink, we doink. Now what we can do is we can do the same kind of thing and we can give this a linear dampening and that will apply some drag, um, which should make it go slower. There we are. As you can see, it takes a little bit longer for this to pivot. It's a really, really nifty thing. So there you have it. That's uh, some ways that we can really quickly make some really cool stuff um, that could be implemented really easily using physics and constraints in Unreal Engine 4. Hopefully you guys will find that useful and it's something uh, that you'll place inside your projects or at least have a play with. Um, you can create some really interesting mechanics with this kind of thing. Uh, Physics-based mechanics are always really fun to put together. But there you go, I will see you guys next time.